Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another brand new video. In today's topic, I wanted to talk about Cash Tira Fenrir, a very popular tech card that's been gaining in a lot of popularity, especially in the Snake Eyes Mirror Match. And I actually think this card has a lot of potential outside of the Snake Eyes Mirror Match as well. So we're going to go ahead and talk about all the pros and cons of this card. Now, I did briefly go over it in my Fire King deck profile that I got top four with at my Santa Clara Regionals. And that is on my channel. If that's something you guys are interested in, you guys want to see like uh, my input um, there or you know just a full profile and how i used it into the fire king deck you guys can check that out but in this specific video i want to go dive a little bit more in depth about Kashira fenrir um, as a whole into this entire format right so obviously we all know it's extremely good into uh the snake eyes mirror match right so because of how the mirror match is working we do have lots of shifts in the meta and i do think cashier fenrir is one of those ways that you can capitalize on this meta shift now what do i exactly mean by that right it because it's now become kind of like a common trend for you know pretty much every uh snake eyes or fire king deck right now to play a bunch of hand traps and these are the hand traps i have in front of your guys' screen ignore the hand but whatever is on the field these are some very popular hand traps right now right now some of them i don't have listed such as infinite impermanence uh but you know that typically doesn't count because that's one of the few outs to fenrir right but look at all these cards that people play right droll and lockbird ash blossom and joyous spring effect Baylor, ghost bell and haunted mansion ghost mortar and moonlit chill and obviously the nibiru right and the goal of the mirror match right now is to try to you know get to 15 to 18 hand traps as we all know and you know try to beat your opponent that way right and when you ever whenever you draw a critical mass amount of hand traps such as three hand traps or even four hand traps which you know you probably will if you were playing up to like 18 21 hand traps what's going to happen is it's going to invalidate cards uh, that are very popular such as the um, lullaby of obedience and the cross out designator right so cross out designator just for example will be able to hit out you know one hand trap and if you have two hand traps then you know cross out will probably beat two hand traps because you can cross out the first hand trap and then your just regular combo uh snake eyes combo typically beats another hand trap right but once you start drawing three and four this cross out isn't really doing much anymore because like you're not using the effect uh or you're not getting the value of what cross out is getting if they open three to four hand traps because your combo is being stopped and it's kind of like you use crossed out for no reason right same thing with lullaby of obedience right the goal of lullaby is so that you have more plays so you have you know your snake eye ash your witch and then you can lullaby potentially for like a popular or something like that it basically allows you to get you know more extenders but obviously you know how the mirror match is going with our you know bunch of hand trap strategy here uh that it gets uh, rejected by that type of strategy a lot you know uh so what i'm trying to say is critical mass amount of hand traps three to four hand traps will very much so invalidate cross out and invalidate lullaby now let's go back and talk about our fenrir card right fenrir actually plays very well into this type of strategy now as you guys can see like i showed earlier none of these cards trade into fenrir at all so a very common example that i was showcased in another previous video but i'll just explain it again briefly is let's say i normal summon a copy of snake eye ash activate the effect and my opponent has effect veiler ghost bell ash blossom ghost mourner and all these cards if i cross out one of them i'm still gonna lose like i said earlier but if i have a fenrir on the board and even if my snake eye ash gets hit with an effect veiler or an infinite impermanence or cards like that the fenrir now will be able to trade very heavily into these very common hand traps such as these ones here fenrir into droll and lockbird you know droll doesn't do anything same with ash blossom same with ghost spell same with ghost mourner and same with nib and they have to play into this fenrir which isn't easily doable actually right if they have a copy of dia bell star the black witch they actually can't activate the effect um efficiently because if they do you can just banish the witch face down and they don't have a card to send with the original sinful spoils as well as normal summoning a copy of snake eye ash if you banish the snake eye ash then they don't actually have a way to you know tribute it off to get the flamberg dragon so the, the fenrir is actually a very solid interruption as a card alone on top of beating the critical mass amount of hand traps and that's essentially why i think it's good in the mirror match right now and it takes over cards uh like cross out and lullaby because of the role that it fills into the current meta shift obviously if we go down to like you know 12 hand traps or go into a more board breaker approach um then it changes but you know we always need to adapt to the meta and see what people are playing currently in the meta game so that we can get a edge in our um in um 
in our decks, right? And because of how it works right now, I think Fenrir is absolutely amazing. Some other usages that the Fenrir has is also beating cards like Summon Limit and Anti Spell Fragrance, essentially just eliminating Floodgate cards, right? Uh, so, you know, Summon Limit being one of the cards that everyone is playing in their decks right now it seems and some people play anti-spell i did but i i've seen less of anti-spell now but more of summon limit and the fenrir is absolutely insane into the summon limit because if you just even if you reach the the two limit summon you know special summon fenrir normal summon snake eye ash you get popular and then you know they summon limit on the popular because that's what they should do and then you can literally just enter battle phase clear their card um and if you don't have an extending play after you actually don't even have to banish the summon limit you can just banish their monster for example keep the summon limit on field and lock your opponent out of the summon limit because it's not easily outable by your own opponent because you do have a fenrir that can banish snake eye ash because the way they get rid of their own summon limit is to send it with snake eye ash to get flamberg dragon right but now if you have fenrir on field it actually checks the uh snake eye ash so you know you can also lock your opponent out of their own summon limit and that is completely uh gg right so absolutely powerful in the way that it handles uh floodgate cards as well as beating you know very well into this uh very nice hand trap meta right so that's pretty much it for this entire video i just wanted to go over this card more in depth and why uh, i ended up playing it and you know how the meta is shaping form where i see a bunch of other people playing it now since you know deck lists are being public i do think this card is absolutely insane for all the reasons that i mentioned uh let me know what you guys think about this card do you guys want to play this card or do you guys think it's better than cards like cross out or lullaby let me know in the comments below if you guys made it this far don't forget to leave a like comment and a sub and i'll see you in the next one